All right, round two. We're going to keep this hand. It's pretty good. I like it. Blur of Blades into Plague Belcher, perhaps. We also have a Struggle, which is good. Slither Blade. Well, I haven't seen that card in a while. All right. Well, I may just Blur of Blades that to make it a little bit less relevant. Strategic planning. Hmm. Getting rid of Island and Tragic Lesson. All right. So we'll do the Blur Blades on their turn. I don't care so much if they use a counter spell or whatever. And if they, like, cartouche it, then at least I'll know to save my Blur Blades and use a struggle to survive instead. I think it's okay to do this, though, because my mana is going to be busy for the next couple turns, so it's pretty decent uh, damage prevention. Wasteland Scorpion. Alright, so I think we'll play the Plague Belcher. Put the counters on itself and pass. Okay, so I can discard a swamp, which is fine. Hmm. Um. All right. So we can Torment of Venom the Scorpion now. Possibly make them discard or whatever. And then we can get in with the Plague Belcher. I didn't have to discard the Swamp either. I could just take three. It, it might have actually been smarter to take three in hindsight. Just because... I do actually have some five and six drafts in my deck. So if I draw one, it, I do get punished for not taking three. That's probably a pretty sensible play there. Your Slither Blade at best is just going to be a chump block, so why not just get rid of it? But I don't mind it either way. So basically what? Our Blur of Blades prevented two damage to us and dealt two damage to my opponent. It's not the worst for two mana. And Merciless Eternal, okay. So we're going to take three here. Crash through. Uh, so we can play Struggle on the Merciless Eternal. They have one card left, though. Otherwise, are they going to double block my Plague Belcher? I guess that's that's a real question. I probably am willing to discard Crash Through to Torment. Although, I mean, I can I can lose three for a little while. I'm not in a big rush to start discarding, even though I already did discard. Um, so I guess is using Struggle on a Merciless Eternal a waste? I think they're in pretty much top deck mode, so I'm just going to kill this. And continue to bash for three. I mean, they're not in top deck mode necessarily. Their last card could be removal, but this feels fine to me. Like, I get to keep the beats going. 
If they play another creature, I can blur blades their mummy and keep the beats going. Although, admittedly, it's a little bit less than perfect, less than ideal. Um, I think that we, if I'm blur blading, maybe I, eh, we'll lose three. It's okay. So we got another land, which I can theoretically discard next turn, if I'd like. Although, hmm. Do I mind trading a Plague Belcher for a Mummy and an Eternal here? They have one card left. Or should I just blur now, get in for two, take them to eight, and then next turn play the Emberhorn Minotaur? Hmm. I actually don't know. I want to play the Emberhorn, but do I want to try to play Belcher for these two? I I don't know. Attack with this, they're definitely going to double block. Kill them both. Play the Emberhorn. Play the Crash Through as well. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. If they have a removal, it's worse. I think I'm still going to do it. So in that case, maybe I'm supposed to just play the Crash Through first? I suppose so. Well, that's kind of cool. Alright. Let's get in. We have to double block it. And no block is, is... Yeah, that's phenomenal, too. So now we'll play Emberhorn. And pass. Okay, so lethal stinging our Emberhorn Minotaur. I guess since he can't block anyway, that does make sense. So we'll lose another three. Imminent Doom, there it is. Turn after we play the crash through. Well, we're playing Heart Piercer this turn anyway, and we're not going to sack our Plague Belcher, so. Oops, that's fine. So I guess, well, that's perfect, actually. We'll just discard our Imminent Doom. It's about as, that's about as useful as it'll get. Alright, so they had some pretty useful last cards, unfortunately, for us. Fortunately for them. So we'll discard our Imminent Doom. There's a Plague Belcher. So, we can blur this one. Attack with Plague Belcher. And we'll just play a Plague Belcher, and we'll uh, put the counters on itself. Because this way, if they kill either of our Plague Belchers, they lose two life, or is it whenever another's on? Well, either way, if they kill either, either of our guys presents lethal, 
uh, if we successfully attack in, basically. Like, they kill this Plague Belcher, they lose one, they die to this. They kill this one, same thing. We draw a land, we kill him with Heart Piercer. Alright, not good enough. So we'll lose three. And swing. So playing against another blue-black deck, oddly enough, I feel like there's not a ton of blue-black in this format. Uh, despite Imminent Doom still looking terrible, I still just have this sickness that I need to play it. I really have been sort of my own uh, my own worst enemy in this entire format. I just keep wanting to do fun things unsuccessfully, so I don't know what my problem is, but it's a real sickness. I just, like, deliberately play, you know decks that aren't as good uh, because I want to see fun things happen but I don't know why I do it's it's bad it's bad uh, what do we think are we gonna keep it the same or are we gonna do the same thing we did last time where we bring in like cards that are less exciting but more consistent I think we'll just keep it the same this time So, one lander we should probably mulligan. This one we'll keep. Hey, we do have an imminent doom. That's cool. Um, I guess we can leave cycle. I, I don't exactly see why we can't leave cycle desert. Dread wanderer. All right. Do we want to? I guess the question is, how many four drops do we have? Remember, we have a six drop here, so we have four, five, six cards in our deck that are four or more mana. All right, whatever, we'll play it. We'll play it. That's all right. So I think turn three we go Plague Belcher, and then turn four we go Imminent Doom Soul Scar Mage. Is it whenever a source too? Ooh, that's spicy. How did I not see that interaction? Soul Scar Mage is sweet with Imminent Doom. Unfortunately, it doesn't work quite the way you want it to, does it? Because you have to cast the. All right. So I think we're gonna kill that because I don't want him drawing cards. All right, so I think we just kill that now. And then turn four, we go Imminent Doom, Soul Scar Mage, kill the Dread Wanderer. And then turn five, maybe we play the Play Belcher, I guess. Who knows, maybe they'll play a Carrion Screecher here and we get to punish a little bit. That'd be cool. No play at all. Hmm. All right, let's go. I'm gonna do.
but Imminent Doom and Soulscar Mage are actually pretty cool together. Unsummoning their guy, eh, I guess that's alright. That doesn't strike me as too bad for us. So the question now is, do I want to put the counters on my Soul Scar Mage? Because Plague Belcher is a lot more exciting as a 5-4 menace. That is for sure. Oh, because it didn't deal damage, it didn't actually trigger the Imminent Doom. That's interesting, too. So because he unsummoned it in response, I don't get to put a Doom counter on this because the damage wasn't dealt. That's pretty interesting. All right, get rid of a couple lands. So we know they have Lethal Sting in their deck, which does make me, I think, just want to put the Plague Belcher's counters on itself. I think ultimately it's a little bit, it's a little bit safer. I think it's a wiser choice. Plus, I guess, like I said, the Soul Scar Mage is actually pretty useful with. Uh, our Eminent Doom, if we ever find another one drop. But because they have Lethal Sting, I do think it makes more sense to put the counters on the Plague Belcher and diversify. We can still use Lethal Sting on our Soul Scar Mage, too, which isn't the worst. Striped Riverwinder, it occurs to me, is actually going to be a big problem to beat. Okay, so they did have the Lethal Sting, this is fine. They do get to bring their Wanderer back, which is a bit unfortunate, but... Can't quite play the Ceradon, so we'll get in for one and pass. Not quite worth using a Lethal Sting on a Dread Wanderer. So they probably, their last card is probably the seven drop guy, which is going to be a problem. Since I can't, uh, can't really do anything about it. I guess I have menace guys, but I can't make it unable to block with the Ceradon, which is a bit of an issue. I can double block it, but I can't really attack into it. I guess my Ceradon can hold down the fort reasonably well. Merciless Eternal. That's not too scary. No attacks this time, sure. So Magmaroth's pretty sweet. If I attack with Curse Minotaur, they have a card left in their hand, so I think we just go Magmaroth Pass. My plan is to Lethal Sting next turn using the Soul Scar Mage, and that way I can take out Merciless Eternal, still have a 5-5, five -five, get in with my Curse Minotaur, and feel good. So we put the counter on the Magmaroth, draw a card, Lethal Sting, the Merciless Eternal, and put a counter on our Soulscar Mage, get our Prowess Trigger too, which is nice. Okay. 
So I think we're just going to get in with the Curse Mantar. I have another Lethal Sting in my deck. I could get in for four, but... I guess the question is, would my opponent block? Because if I attack with this, they block and they get it right back. But I guess they're going to attack, so I think I am actually going to attack with it. it it's kind of weird. It's not that great. But the problem is, if I don't attack with my Soul Scar Mage... They smash back for two, and I kind of just left with a zero one. I don't know. In fact, I'm now I'm glad I did because I get more damage in because I need to really try and race here as best as I can. I think we'll play the Ceridon now. It makes better use of mana. It's it's one less damage, but it's the same clock. I guess it's not... Well, no, it's the same clock as Magmaroth would be a 4-4 anyway, so it definitely makes more sense to play the Ceridon. I don't have anywhere to boost my Magmaroth right now anyway. Alright, so they had another Lethal Sting. And they get their Wanderer back, sure. Crash through. There we go. So I think they go crash through now. And I suppose we can deal the one to them. Because we have the prowess. This way, my Magmaroth... Well, I was going to say my Magmaroth on its own is lethal, but that's not exactly true. It's okay. So, I haven't played any two drops this game, which means I have four of them. My opponent says, wow, six straight lands, so they've gotten, looks like they're getting mana flooded, fortunately for us. So I guess we'll just smash here. So we got round two, which means we already have a better showing with this version of the Imminent Doom deck, so I guess that's good news. We'll see you in round three.